Previously on Clean Break. Dad, that's going on the plane and going to work. I'm a stay-at-home dad. This career, it's not for me. There's got to be something better out there for me. About the boy, the plane. I want a job that doesn't feel like a job every morning. It felt like it's something I wanted to get up and get out of bed and do. But before that, it's a Hawaii blue. This is going to be ridiculous. We had the opportunity with a clean slate to really start this journey. Here it is. It's playtime. You have 10 days of playtime. I'm definitely afraid to fail in some measures in my life. Dude, Luke's doing it right now, bro. At the bottom of the rock, I didn't think I could do it. I far exceeded my expectations. I'm never going to make millions of dollars being a surfboard shaper, but the lifestyle you get, it's priceless. I took that and said, hell, if Brett did it, why can't I do it? As soon as I heard skydiving, here we go. Now my day is going to be shot. For Steven and I, it was really about encouraging Chase to face his fears. I overcame my fear of something that I never would have thought that I would have done. We're only halfway through the journey. I'm really looking forward to what's in store. Stay tuned. What if you had the chance to put your life on hold, to break free, and find out what you're really made of? For three complete strangers, that chance has come. Steven, a young pharmaceutical salesman caught in an unfulfilling career. This career, this industry, it's not for me. There's got to be something better out there. Chase, a stay-at-home dad needing to recharge and reconnect. Hopefully this trip will give me what I need to, to start the next chapter. And Luke, a bartender with a master's searching for his passion. For me, the motivation is to really reach my potential. They will travel to Hawaii and for 10 days search to discover who they truly are. Follow the journey, embrace the change for the adventure of a lifetime. Heading off to Maui. For stay-at-home father Chase, bartender Luke, and salesman Steven, the past five days on Oahu began a metamorphosis. Now they have reached a turning point. Arriving on Maui, they are no longer strangers, but a band of brothers with a shared goal to get their lives back on track. Oh, yeah. Ta-da! All right, let's do this. Dude, you'll catch everything on that. With a new island as the backdrop in the home stretch of their journey, the time is now to shed their cocoons and truly learn to fly. Day six, acquire skill and make it deep. Here we are, just pulling up to our new pad in Maui. Thank you, Evan. Oh, Woo! Wow. This is work. Beautiful. Dude, the Maui house was unreal. So awesome. Every single room was like bigger than my apartment back home. The house was amazing. It was like something out of Cribs. Couldn't ask for really more than a spot on the beach in Maui. First day in Maui. That's it. That's it. Blue Ribbon Windsurfer, champion stand-up paddler, big wave pioneer. Together with partner in crime Laird Hamilton, Dave Kalama reestablished the relevance of stand-up paddle as a competitive sport. Kalama's feats on the ocean define the unique combination of daredevil spirit and marine sage that characterizes the true Hawaiian waterman. Today, the guys will get a chance to learn how the best become the best. We meet up with Dave Kalama, renowned waterman. Hi there, how are you? Good morning, guys. Hi, Steven. Steven, nice to meet you, I'm Dave. Dave is legendary. He is like the best stand-up paddler in the world, not to mention he is a phenomenal big wave surfer. The whole point of training is to do something outdoors, so I might as well train outdoors. We're gonna go for a stand-up paddle, basically along the whole north coast of Maui. But uh, before we do, Let's get into this and, and get some action going. The regiment that I use for my beach exercise is quite old school, and you know, I'm a big fan of Rocky, so I basically model my beach workout after that. Nice, easy jog. Take it easy, Luke. <laughs> Thanks, Chase. Running on the beach, we're concentrating on squeezing our toes in the sand, which is very important, you know, when you're standing up on a board. We would pop off onto just some random tree branch, do a bunch of pull-ups, get back to jogging, sit-ups and push-ups and dips. It was kind of cool, you know, every movement that we were doing on land is a movement that we would be using out in the water. Let's keep moving. A lot of times people are intimidated by my reputation that, oh, he works out crazy and it's gonna be gnarly and I'm gonna ruin you, and that's not the case at all. It's about doing it at a level that is going to motivate you 
to come back and do it again. I'm taking a break, dude. Okay. Ankle killing me, dude. Ankle? Yeah. It was pretty evident that I had an ankle injury at some times on the beach, and so Dave was asking about that, and you know, that's a basketball injury. Basketball was my thing in high school. Coming from an extremely successful family of football players, most people assume Luke Rogers must have enjoyed past glory on the gridiron. Not so. Luke's passion lay on the hardwood, and at nearly six foot five, with the same competitive spirit that runs through the rest of his family, basketball was a natural fit. Dude, I'm, 20, I'm 29, I played in a 35 and over league. Oh, yeah? So I was kind of a little bit of a ringer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the one that gets hurt. Kind of went tit for tat, you know. He he, he wanted to know about the ocean and, and things that I do, and I, I wanted to know about basketball. And I mean, he was a guy that wanted to know you. Dave was a guy who's like, there you are, not here I am. I suck at basketball, but I love it. I love watching it. I love shooting baskets. You're going to look back on your life, and you're not going to look at how big your bank account was. You're going to look at what you did, what mattered, how much fun did you have. Because we're not here forever, so you better make the most of it. His message to us was really about if you are willing and able and, and have enough courage to follow your passion, opportunity will arise from that. That's something that's easy to understand and sometimes not so easy to do. I'm a slow bear. <laughs> I thought, man, I can hang with this guy. I work out all the time. But it was a tough workout. Oh, man, I haven't felt a burn like that in my legs in quite some time. As you can probably see, now, now you know why I like working out here instead of in the gym. You know the final thing that, that you do after working out on the beach that Dave does is he jumps in the water and just like cleanses yourself off. Just kind of that sighing, that big relief, just, ah, I'm done, thank God. <laughs> I jumped in there with him and he starts talking about his kids and you know, I explained to him that, that I'm in the situation of, of trying to decide whether or not I want to expand our family. And I asked him, you know, what his thoughts were. You know, I listened to him talk, and you could see his eyes light up when he spoke about his child, and that tells you that a person loves being a dad or loves being a parent. He's, you know, giving me a little advice, just basically saying, listen, you know, if you love what you do, which you love being a father, then, then I think, you know, the decision should be pretty simple for you. Hearing it from him and getting, you know, advice like that definitely was, you know, a turning point in, in this journey. Coming up, when it comes to paddleboarding, Dave Kalama's message to the guys is, if at first you don't succeed, fall, fall again. Try not to get too frustrated, you'll get it. One of the fastest growing water sports in the world, stand-up paddleboarding is easily understood, but not as easily mastered. The past two Nash International Paddleboard Championships were won by today's instructor, Dave Kalama, and they began right here at Maliko Gulch. And it's crazy, because after this workout, which you know was by no means easy, you know, it was <laughs> time to work out and then go stand-up paddle. They set us up with some, some paddle boards. I didn't really know what to expect. I never tried it before, never done it. You paddle with this end into the water or this end? Just like that. You want the angle reaching forward. Okay. Like, you know, first time on a stand-up paddle board, we're going to paddle out pretty far out in the ocean. The only thing we're going to have to worry about today is some waves. So, so we're going to continue to kind of favor going out. <laughs> The waves that we paddled out into today were intimidating. Steve! Steve! A little more to your right! It was very choppy, very rough. The winds were really, really heavy that day. The, the ocean's starting to get, you know, pretty turbulent. You can just see spray blowing across the way. But you think you would like kind of catch a little break with a wave pushing you, and then a wave would come in this way and knock you off. You basically maintain your balance best you can, which you know for some of us is more easy than others. Little surge forward, nice. You know we, we made it through the channel, uh, got out into the open water. Then we finally got out there. I mean, you feel like you're way, way out there. All right, where is everybody? I just started booking it. You know, I'm lucky. I'm a smaller guy. I'm on a bigger board. 
Chase didn't ask a lot of questions. He seems like the kind of guy that uh, learns a lot through observing. Chase on the paddleboard kind of sprinted ahead at first. He, uh, he got the hang of it real quick. I, I see this, this mass uh, floating in the water. So I paddle up to it, and sure enough, it's, you know, it's a turtle. The thing's like huge, it's this big. And I was the only one there that saw this thing happen in the middle of the ocean, standing on a board in the middle of the ocean. Okay, you know, I had that. Now let's wait for the guys to catch up. Bro, it's so much easier on your feet, but it's not paddle board. He started out a little apprehensive, but still had that gun ho attitude. You know, he's like, well, I'm here to do it, and by golly, I'm gonna do it. A little bit frustrated, you know, because I wanted to just like get up and get going, and I'm seeing Dave, you know, who didn't even have his hair wet the entire time. He flourished pretty quickly and, and, and started catching some swells and, and moving pretty quickly and, and kind of catching up to Chase. Yep, keep paddling, keep, keep paddling. As he was telling us, you know, keep pushing, keep pushing, you know, I was just thinking to myself, that's right, you know, I'm gonna keep pushing, keep pushing for my passion, and it's not about the money, and, and the opportunity will come to me. I'll just start paddling real easy. You know, those guys were a little better at this than I was. Oh. Man, I think I might have fallen, you know, 80 times. Oh, I fell a lot. <laughs> it ain't the last time it's gonna happen, Luke. I know he was frustrated, and nobody likes to fall in a lot. Yep, go ahead and stand up. There was a lot of times, a lot of times falling off, that I kind of wanted to, you know, throw in the towel. But I wasn't gonna let myself do that. And I don't think Dave was gonna let me do that either. Don't worry, buddy. Be patient, try not to get too frustrated, you'll get it. Dave just came up alongside me and just talked me through it and said, you know, hey, Luke, you're at the free throw line. Back to the free throw line. I wanted to get him in that headspace where, where he was on the free throw line, and you need to calm yourself down and get your composure. That's where I want you to be, at the free throw line. It seemed to be effective, because all of a sudden, he stood a little taller, he owned that space, and, and he did it. He relaxed a little bit. That was something that was familiar to him. All the way up, Luke. Commit to that last little bit. Nice, Luke. You miss all the shots you don't take. If, if you're not in the game, you can't win. Failure really is an essential part of succeeding. You know, he made the difference in me really feeling like I succeeded at something that was very difficult. That's what I love about Luke is, is the fact that he is just so determined. He's not that type of guy that will, you know, wave the arm and say, take me in, take me in, I'm done, I'm done. He stuck with it and we ended up paddle boarding uh, six miles. That's what I'm talking about. You know, it's a, uh, it's funny because all three of us fell, you know, in the water quite a few times. But Kalama, man, that guy, not once did he go under the water. I kept thinking to myself, this is like an icon. To be taking us, you know, amateurs out here is just every surfer's dream. I, you know, I was surprised that, that Dave used the analogy of basketball. And that's a credit to him. Like, he took something that was relevant to me and like it was so relevant and so easy for me to understand that I think it really did help. And he was able to talk me to a place where, you know, I believed I could do it, and I did. After spending more time falling in the water than they had ever hoped, the guys all agree on a preferred aspect of their next activity, staying dry. You know, Maui has this other side to it, you know, up in the mountains where you can go zip lining. And these zip lines were huge. We're so high up, you can see both sides of the island. And you're looking, here's your start point, and there's your end point way, way down there. It was, you know, the eight highest zip lines in, the, uh, in all the islands for us to, to zip down. Yep. Here we go. They hook us up, and there's only one place to go down. <laughs> this was a uh, serious zip line. This is you know, soaring you know, maybe a 1,000 feet above a riverbed. I didn't know what to think of it. I didn't know whether or not to be scared. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let this be like a free ride and just take it all the way down. Enjoy. It's like sitting in your lazy boy recliner or something on the couch, except your TV, your television is the mountains, the ocean. Zip on, baby. We're literally zip lining through the canyons. You have this backdrop of all these beautiful mountains here. We got to do that, you know, six or seven times, and the last one is is the one that's two thirds of a mile long. Zipping. Yeah! <laughs>
We got up to, I think, like 45, 50 miles an hour that day. Got some speed on some of the, some of the lines. The views were incredible. It was a fun thing for us to do. Glad we got to kind of change the pace a little bit and stay dry for, for a little while. Nice, man. Yeah, buddy. Zip line complete. <laughs> well, zip on, zip on. Coming up. Riding waves on Maui isn't the only way to really rip. They told us these things were incapable of rolling. We kind of took that to heart and really pushed the limits. Visit the Schick Hydro experience on Facebook and enter to win your very own clean break adventure. Schick Hydro, free your skin. With a new day brings new adventures. Still recovering from their previous endeavors in the water, the guys decide to set out for an activity a little less aquatic, but just as extreme. Uh, when I think ATV, I think of like those crotch rockets that you drive. This isn't the ones you sit on top and just kind of chill. This is the ones where you can actually get a little bit loose on it. When you turn them on, the things just roar. These things are bad mamba jambas. Right then and there, I knew that, that this was going to be an awesome time. These ATVs, they got a little giddy up, too. So you hit that gas, and you're on it immediately, you know? You know, they told us these things were incapable of rolling. We kind of took that to heart and really pushed the limits. Let's go, baby! We had the pedal to the metal. We were uh, taking these sharp turns, trying to stay on the trails. I felt like I was totally in control, but totally out of control at the same time. The dirt was loose, so you got, you got to get real, you know, real squirrely out there. We're ripping through this sugarcane field, and these things, we're just bouncing around all over the place and, and tearing up this path. Chase was a great driver. He could look like a stunt driver out there. Like he was, you know, he got it up on two wheels. I mean, he looked like he was in his element, if he ever was in his element. Just dirt flying everywhere. We all ate a bunch of dirt, man. I ended up with dirt everywhere. I mean, we definitely had some competition out there and trying to cut each other off or just trying to go faster than the next man. Stephen was great. Stephen was a good driver. Even not as good a driver as I was. <laughs> it was just fun to really cut loose and just, you know, tear it up out there. We finished up feeling like we're, we're seven again, you know? Kids in, in grown toys. <laughs> After a fun-filled day in the sun, the guys have worked up an appetite. But a dinner invitation from a well-intentioned local affords the chance to experience a different kind of heat. There's this guy, Jamie, and he is known for growing his own chili peppers. What's the full name of the pepper again? You say Boots. Bootjolokia, the ghost pepper. He's trying to go for the world record of the hottest chili pepper. Jamie puts them in his mouth and kind of, kind of show us how hot the, uh, the ghost pepper was. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was kind of freaking out. The boys are in trouble. So he took a habanero pepper, stuffed it full of these ghost flake peppers, sat all three of us down, put a stuffed pepper in front of us with a glass of milk. The person that goes to the milk last is the champion. No, I'm sitting there going, oh, I can't believe we're gonna do this right now. Let the fun begin. <sighs> oh. We were all sitting there chewing it, chewing it, chewing it, looking at each other, all right, who's gonna go out first? Okay, it's there. Those peppers just like, it was like a bomb went off in my mouth. <laughs> It has a back heat. So for about the next 10 minutes, it's just gonna get hotter. I'm over it. I was the first one to go, and I had to get the milk maybe after like three or four minutes. So it's me and Luke, you know? And I know he likes spice. It's hot. It's like the entire inside of your mouth is on fire. The heat just starts in my mouth is, is an inferno right now. I think my ears are starting to quiver a little bit. It wasn't too long after Steven the chase went. That's it, I'm out. Congrats. Spicy food is my thing, and I want to show the guys that you know, this was going to be my deal. I can make you up another one. All right, make another one. All right. Ooh, I like this guy. Jamie went, loaded him up with a second stuffed pepper with even more ghost flakes. Well, that's a lot, man. And Luke wolfed that thing down. Ready for this? I mean, yeah. yeah. It was 
really, really, really hot. My insides are not happy. If you can kind of imagine what it'd be like to swallow fire and not have it go out and continue to burn, that's kind of I know. That's kind of how it felt. Oh, yeah. I'm going to throw up, guys. Oh. Uh -oh. So uncomfortable. I'm going to see that. It's so uncomfortable. There was probably a few minutes there where I thought there might be a possibility I might throw up. It's like I kind of want to throw up, but I don't need to. I feel like I, don't, I just want to. to I'm too excited. my belly. Don't throw up. I don't want to throw up, though. And that lasted for about 10 minutes, and then it was fine. Like, it was back to normal. I'm good. You're like the king of peppers. OK, yeah. I'll take it. King pepper. Just like on Oahu, the path to success is paved with peaks and valleys. And not getting too high or too low is the key to staying the course. OK, OK. Man, what a long day. The zip line uh, course, just amazing. So much fun. The views were insane. Well, the workout with uh, Dave Kalama. We did all kinds of push-ups and pull-ups and crunches and jogging. Doing the workout on the beach kind of like set the tempo for the day, which was an extremely hard, hard day. The paddle boarding was, uh, was insane. It was way harder than surfing, in my opinion. I fell and I fell and I fell and I fell some more. There were some huge sets rolling in. The waves are out there and it's choppy and you know, it's a difficult learning curve to, to get right out there and do it. I'm gonna get back out there. I'm gonna go paddleboard again. I'm gonna keep falling. Um, but that's how you get better. That's how you improve. I just want you to know, Mom and Violet, that I love you so much and I miss you guys. Much more in store before we end this journey all in all. So, uh, so stay tuned. Can't wait for another day in Maui. On the next episode, of Clean Break. It's definitely winding down, and that's starting to get in the back of my mind. We're coming to a close. Today's going to be our last day of surfing. If you can surf this tricky, sloppy waves, yeah. then you can surf anywhere. I got pushed into the rocks that we weren't supposed to get pushed into. That water is so dangerous that anything can happen at any given moment. Load up the bikes and head up the top of the volcano. It's 45 degrees, raining. We are having the best ride ever. I mean, we're firing on all cylinders. And then, I don't know what happened. We missed our turn. We gotta start cruising now. Yeah. It's gonna get dark. You can only see eight feet in front of you. And we're cruising down on a windy road with cliffs. That got a little crazy. That was the scariest thing on this whole trip. and you're not gonna look at how big your bank account was. You're gonna look at what you did. I guess somewhere along the way, we missed our turn. We're somewhere like in the boundary trail. So we ended up going through the, you know, quote, impassable area.